ti pada o e yoruba is so much <laughs> All right, with us on the couch is screenwriter, producer, and director J. Franklin Jitawar. Yes. He's a Nigerian filmmaker, author, and entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now, you might have heard his name because he's uh, done a lot of uh, great movies, and especially currently. First of all, let's tell you the other ones. Uh, he's done The Made in Heaven, The, the Housewife Dinner, and also, more recently, the one you've just seen. The uh, origin. The origin of Madame Madam Koiko. Koiko. You are welcome, Franklin. Good to have you here. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Thanks right. for being here. Now let's talk about the story. Okay. You and uh, you and you know, Bola the writer, Dele, you know yeah. put together. You know, you wrote the story for yeah. Madame Koi Koi. First off, what inspired it? Because there was there's a lot of as you watch the movie, you can tell there's a lot of depth. Mm. You know, with the story. There's this development with the story, even though we haven't seen the second part. But even with the first part of it, you can still feel the development as you get along. So talk to us about, you know, the, what you, 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 the, the mind mm. behind the story. Okay. Um, in 2020, right after the pandemic, um, I had just set up my studio and I wanted to tell a Nigerian story. Yeah. We've always seen Hollywood do their own legends and stuff like um, Dracula mm -hmm. and Sasquatch and all that. And this was one of the stories I know um, everyone in Nigeria who has gone through secondary school can resonate with. Yeah, can resonate with and they know. So I said, okay, you know what? I think I want to tell this story of Lady Koi Koi. I mean, I grew up in the South, so we call her Lady Koi Koi. I moved to Lagos and she was called Madame Koi Koi or Miss Koi Koi. So um, my co-writer, Bola Dale, went in the office and I said, I want to make this story. And I was like, ah, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, because it's our story. We need to start telling our story. So um, we had to start researching what is actually the origin story of Madame Koi Koi. But all the stories, they didn't align. Mm. It was either one version or the other. And it didn't make sense to me because the legend has it that she roams dormitory mm -hmm. and she kills, kills people. people. And she's in every boarding school mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And I, the question was, why is she in every boarding school? And why is she killing people? And what sort of people do she, uh, and does she kill? And how is she in every boarding school at boarding the same school time? At the same time. So <laughs> um, we started researching. And I said, you know what? Let's leave all that. But there are certain themes that comes with that story. There was the sexual harassment, rape. And of course she died and then she came back to hunt. So we had to develop our own origin story. So I told Bola Dale, okay, I will need you to give me a first draft, but this is what I want to see. I want it to span two, two timelines, which is um, 1970s and wow. 1990s. Mm. You understand? I need um, it to be set in a missionary school, um, hence um, St. Augustine Catholic School. And I want that to be like a principal who's this, and then I want, um, that to be this set of boys who are like intelligent boys and all of that. I want there to be this old guy who will be the one who has seen the first one and mm -hmm. will witness the second one. And I just sort of created characters I wanted him to work with and a direction. And then he did the first draft and we dumped it to the side. Mm -hmm. And then in 2021, um, December, I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready to make this story now. So I picked it up and I reviewed it and I went through the, the, the entire process of the story, because when we do development, we're looking at themes, and yes, we spoke about what theme are we going to, or rather tone do we want for the film. So we said, okay, let's address issues that society will normally yeah. throw under the carpet or frown out or not want to talk about. And one of them was sexual molestation, rape, um, the role religion plays sometimes in covering up this and um, bullying, um, um, money and how it affects society and yeah. the basic individual. So we had all that put in the story. We didn't just want to focus on Madame Koiko as the creepy lady yeah. who stalks dormitory. We wanted it to have a story that would build to that. So by the time we were done with the development and I wrote the second draft, we were able to have a story that answered some of those questions we asked in the beginning. Why was she murdered? Why does she roam every dormitory in Nigerian boarding schools? And then what sort of people is she after? You know, um, as we um, look at watching the story, right, you, it's hard to tell 
who is the villain in the story mm. and who is the he superhero well, don't spoil it in the story. I haven't seen it. El Gaga, <laughs> would you? I told you not to watch it. It's right. It's hard to actually tell, but hey. Oh, I, I, I was just listening to him talk about the development. For yeah. me, it's kind of like the story itself because mm. Nigerian story is Nigerian story. Okay, fine. But then when you go into origins and start to develop, develop. start to make sense yeah. of the little nuances yeah. that make a character is the, is the kick for me. And it, it's very interesting to see that we've gotten there in Nigerian movie making. Mm -hmm. Would you say that in Nigeria, all of a sudden, since after the pandemic, or maybe even just only the past year or two, we've started to focus or redirect our focus from just drama into other genres, genres. especially horror. Oh. Would you classify Madame Koi Koi as horror? And to add to his, okay. his, add to his, mine. No way. <laughs> no way. To add to yours, I noticed that you do a lot of dark drama. Yeah, exactly. With dinner, <sighs> that's dark. So, um, like I always say, I like to tell Nigerian stories. Okay. And Dina is one of those stories that globally everybody can relate with. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean, it's relationships, infidel infidelity, and all of that. So, we all know that happens every day. So, I see this happening, and I'm like, okay, it would be nice to actually tell a story. What would it feel like if you found out that the girl you're about to propose to has slept with your friend and his friend? Mm. So, I mean, it's dark yeah, you might, might say so but it's the truth yeah we see that happen every day for the origin um i'll say this nigeria is a horror movie on no. <laughs> <laughs> you understand said, I might and, as well just tape it and we all experience some form of horror whether we like it or True. not yeah. driving on the road the way uh, and people Last react spot. and all of that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the wow. way people react and all of that so um, and growing up in the South, and I mean, it's happening everywhere in the country. You hear people talk about their experiences with um, paranormal activities and all of that. I mean, I, I, I lived in Benin and um, I've heard stories of how someone dated a girl for two years and went to go see her someday and they said she's been she's dead, dead for two years. Sorry, let me, let me call the correspondent for Edu people. Winfrey, where are you? <laughs> Do you understand? So we hear all the stories and I felt that we have been trying to replicate Hollywood, which is boy meet girl, um, they fall in love, something happens, and then they come back, and then it's happy ever after in Lekki with their Camry <laughs> and all that. And it gets boring. You can't be more Hollywood than Hollywood. Mm. But then we have realities that if I start to talk about, we, we can all relate to it. So, so let me just finish about the genre. Yeah. And so... For this genre, I looked at it like, okay, everybody's going in one direction. Mm -hmm. Someone tells a story in, say, comedy, mm -hmm. and it does well, so everybody jumps on that. Yeah. Someone does a romantic comedy, and it does well, and everybody switches to that. So I felt like this was one genre we hadn't explored Explore. and explored properly now, that's in where recent I was time. Go. Exploration <laughs> of the horror genre, but there are names like Ayamatanga, there's uh, Willy Willy, there's... Uh, which are the ones from the 80s. Mm. We were there before. Mm. Yeah, and but all of a sudden, it, yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing. So uh, um, when they did Living in Bondage, mm -hmm. that became the, the, the trend, trend mm -hmm. of Sakubi. that time. Mm. So when they did um, Karashika, yeah. Blood Money, and all of that, I mean, all that, all that is classified under the genre horror. Mm. But um, um, talking about growth and development, development of uh, um, evolution of um, Nollywood mm -hmm. came cinemas, yeah. right? And then the first cinema film to actually break numbers was um, 30 Days in Atlanta mm -hmm. and it was a comedy. Yeah. And for commercial reasons, everybody, everybody felt, okay, doing a comedy would be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And that trend went on, wedding party and all yeah. of that, all yeah. through that era. You are correct. And then um, I did dinner, which was different. Mm -hmm. It was a drama. And yeah, I mean, people stopped and like, okay, this is different. And then people started trying rom-coms, drama and all of that until they did a political thriller like yeah. um, King of Boys. Yeah. yeah. And then everybody paused again and like, okay, you know what? I think we should explore this. Now it's the um, epics mm -hmm. with um, yeah. King of Thieves, yeah. Jagu, yeah. Jagu, Jagu and all of that. Yeah. So um, people tend to go or look towards what's trending mentality. Mm. you understand and for me when something is overly saturated or even saturated at all 
I'm like, no, I'm nah, not going to go there. To... I have to find a MMO was that you were telling me about the uh, makeup and everything? Because I yes, think that so for we horror, that's a big yes, part a of big the horror genre. Of the genre. Um, so I was actually going to talk about casting mm -hmm. um, because um, there were, you could feel the intentionality with the cast yeah. members. They were not exactly known faces in the industry. I mean, not so many of them. But you can tell the people in the front liners, the front mm -hmm. liners were... Practically, there were more or less new faces, new faces in the yeah. industry. Was there um, an, any reason was for that, deliberate? that? Was that deliberate? Yeah, it's, it's always been my play. Um, I believe in performance over fame. Okay. Because it, um, eventually, your content is going to travel the world. Yeah. We never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. And if I can have somebody suspend your disbelief mm. and say, okay, this is really happening, I'd rather do that than have a name mm -hmm. which we know locally, yeah. but when that content travels around the world, they'll be looking uh -huh. at it like, oh, this is not believable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? So I've always been that guy who believes in, okay, let me find the right actor for this character. Mm -hmm. And I go through auditions with them and all of that, and then walk them through the process of becoming that character. So I like to find actors that will give me the kind of energy and mm -hmm. performance that I would want to see in a film. Yeah. Once again, so yeah, I, I was very intentional about finding very deliberate, young, very, very vibrant actors who can play the character as well. Yes, yeah, so also talking about special effect, let's point on yeah. that a little bit. Were you involved in the, you know, gruesomeness? <laughs> you know, because there was the a gore. lot of people, the gore. I mean, there's, there's... So the gore wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. You didn't see a whole lot of slashing, but hey, um, for a character like Madame Koiko, yes, there will be blood and there will be slashes and all of that. But um, when we approached the film, we wanted um, to get an FSF, um, special effect makeup, mm -hmm. let me not use the acronyms, yeah. a special effect makeup artist who understood what we we're trying to do. So we had two of them and then we're like, okay, you know what, um, here's a little budget, go do something, let's see, mm -hmm. so we can make our decisions. And um, Ruth Hackard, who was the special effect makeup artist on the project, um, shocked us she wowed us and we we're like okay this is great and then once i gave her a brief she understood what we wanted to do and it was easy working with her and um for for madam koi koi we didn't want it to be just about the killings it's an origin story we wanted to focus more on the story that led to mm -hmm. why she's this person so we tried to reduce the slashing and yeah. all that so we somehow cut to black when it's <laughs> yeah, and which that is about more to yeah, 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 you understand yeah. so you only see more like the end mm. result of her murders you understand mm. so um but maybe in the subsequent parts you see more slashing well, well i am really really wow. really excited Very about this it's actually part. trending across africa now yes it is madam Koke, fantastic i will however charge you with something i'm a big wes anderson fan and that's the kind of movie i love to see if you want to tell nigerian stories in a hollywood way do you ever think, do you think that you will one day give us something like that? Wes Anderson-ish. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm a huge fan of Wes Anderson as well. I mean, every one of our uh, um, legends that we grew up watching, um, um, I was a huge fan of Spielberg and mm -hmm. um, Cameron, so I, I think they have a major influence on my approach to film. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, Wes Anderson is a brilliant filmmaker, writer, director, and he has a certain style that's just flat movements and yeah, um, picture and everybody is in the frame. Yeah. You see everybody clearly in the frame. So that's his style. And um, um, they say a director has a voice mm -hmm. and Anderson has his voice. So I think, um, yes, someday I'm going to make a picture Do like Wes me, Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> Do it just for me. Thank you, so much, yeah. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, Good to have here. you. Yes, Thanks and well done me. on the su success you, of Madame Poico. But we have to make it stuff. Yeah. Our chef has been hard at work. We need to reward you mm -hmm. in the little way that we can. So please, let's Do make come over. Yeah.